It was something that I had been interested in and concerned about and aware of ever since my family and I started spending time in Montana. In Montana, you're not separate so much from the idea of the climate of the earth changing. There are not many air-conditioned skyscrapers. People are all in the ag business. They depend on rain, they depend on sunshine, they depend on wind, they depend on everything. These people are fighting it. Years and years ago when I lived in California, I didn't know we needed solar power, but I didn't know how it worked. And I knew a guy and he takes me to his house. There's a swimming pool and on his roof, I see coiled snake-like a black garden hose. And I said, oh my God, what, what, what is the garden hose? He says, well, I have a small pump here and it takes the water out of the pool and it pumps it up to the black garden hose and recycles it. And because it's black, it absorbs heat from the sun. And because of that, I don't have to pay for a, uh, a machine to heat my pool. We're not drilling for oil, we're not digging coal. This guy went to Ace and spent $40 on a garden hose and you know, uh, Esther Williams is taking a bath in his pool. Now, I know nobody knows who Esther Williams is, so let's just forget I said that. One day I was listening to the radio and they said that um, Greenland had been affected by climate change to the point where they now could grow cabbage. You know, uh, Idaho, potatoes. Maine, lobster. Chicago, deep dish pizza. Greenland, cabbage? I'm sorry, do you have any Greenland cabbage on the menu tonight? That, for me, was uh, kind of like, oh my God. Something's gone haywire when we're growing massive quantities of cabbage uh, in Greenland. Do you want all the answers to be that long? Be because that, that yeah. was like a tale of two cities. <laughs> yeah, that was. <laughs>